So let's hear from another social entrepreneur. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Matthew um, from Thomson Reuters, who is another successful social entrepreneur. Um, and he's at a pretty incredible stage within his own journey now. So um, I'm really delighted that he's come to share his story. So Matthew, come on down. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, it's a pleasure to have been in, invited down to speak at the Circle Talks event today and share my own personal story of social entrepreneurship. It's a story of innovation, one of enterprise collaboration, of partnership, one of philanthropy, of trust, and has ultimately been one of performance, execution, and success. That story, as you can see from the screen behind me, is Thomson Reuters' Ticket Aid. Ticket Aid is the only corporate ticket reselling website allowing employees access to corporate tickets that have otherwise gone to waste to buy at no more than face value, and in doing so, transfer 100% of the proceeds to charity. Now, where did this idea come from? It's something that uh, we've all experienced at some moment in time. It's been born out of something that every single person in this room has had at some moment in time. And that's attending concerts, attending theatres, attending shows. Let me take you back to that time you were sat in front of your laptop, eagerly awaiting the tickets to be released online, only to find that almost immediately those tickets are sold out. Reluctantly, you go on secondary ticket reselling websites, pay well above face value, and enjoy the concert nonetheless, but you can't help but notice the row upon row of empty seats. I mean, this was a sold out concert, remember? Does that sound familiar? Well, actually, this was an experience I had about three years ago at the O2 Arena in London when I bought tickets, again, on a secondary ticket reselling website, paying well above face value to go see Ed Sheeran. Now, I was literally up with the gods. There wasn't another row behind me. And for those of you that know and have been to the O2 Arena in London, you'll appreciate just how high that is. Don't get me wrong, I really, really enjoyed the concert, but I didn't see much of Ed. What I did see were corporate boxes, empty corporate boxes. And it got me thinking at the time that there has to be a way for us to reallocate these tickets to true fans, and in doing so, raise money for charity. So it got me thinking, and I tried to learn how to code, to develop an app. Not coming from a technology background, failed miserably, but was presented with an opportunity called the Prince's Trust Million Makers Competition. Within our own organization, Thomson Reuters had entered their own corporate team for the first year. Now, the Prince's Trust, being one of the UK's leading charities, as part of that competition, each corporate team are given £1,500 seed funding. They then have to come up with a creative, innovative idea to transform that 1500 over the course of six months into £10,000. Now, I remember being sat in that Thomson Reuters team meeting and hesitating, really thinking whether or not I should put my idea of ticket aid on the table and effectively surrender my intellectual property rights for that idea. But I'm so glad I did. Not only did we raise £10,000 during the six-month period just through the ticket aid initiative alone, but we had tremendous success internally within our own organisation for our employees. So much so that we were approached and encouraged to pitch to our CEO, Jim Smith, as part of our own internal Kickstarter program called the Catalyst Fund. The idea of being successful applicants can receive up to $225,000 to take their idea forward within the business. We were successful with the pitch and have recently uh, finalized the site, built out version two of the site, and just two weeks ago, launched globally within our own internal network, our own employees. In that two-week period, we managed to raise four and a half thousand pounds, which brings our overall total 
and effectively a six-month period to date, to just over £21,000. Now, I'm incredibly grateful to Thomson Reuters for supporting the initiative, but more importantly, for backing the project to the extent that they've now dedicated a full-time resource to this project, and that's the role that I find myself in today, speaking to you as Proposition Director for Ticket Aid. But that's enough about Ticket Aid. Um, I could go on for, for hours and hours about the ins and outs of how we got to where we are, but I think what people in the room are more interested to hear about is the how. How did we get Ticket Aid from ideation to implementation within the space of 18 months? Now, it wasn't an easy task, but I'm willing to share with you all today, and I hope some things I'm about to say, you take some inspiration from and apply that within your own projects and go forth and, as the circle's motto goes, do well, do good. So, the how. And that's what you see on the screen behind me. I tried to whittle it down to five key steps. So I've called them the social entrepreneurship five steps to success. Now, I know the rules of, uh, rules of rhetoric dictate that the magic number is three. But we're all social entrepreneurs. We like to do things differently. So we'll break the mold and we'll, we'll do five. So we've got connect, identify, sell, action, and sponsor. Firstly, we'll, we'll address connect. Now, ideally, you want to be doing all these five in order. Um, and it's only through doing that in order that you'll be able to build upon previous experience to get to the position you want to be in. But remember, you can't do this alone. There'll be times where you will have to work with people that are putting in just as much time, effort, volunteer hours in as you are, as the leader of that project. You'll need them, and you'll need these five key steps to get as far or as close as you can to success with your project. Connect. This is the first step in the process and by far the most important. Why? Because if you're not seeking to solve a problem that really matters most to you, then you won't have the passion, you won't have the drive, the motivation for it to succeed. No matter how hard you try to pretend that it's there, it won't be. You have to draw on an experience, draw on a thought that really builds up that emotion inside of you to not only want to make a change, but you need to make a change. You need to make an impact. That for me was seeing those empty corporate seats. That feeling of frustration and disappointment that I had seeing those empty seats knowing that they should have been allocated to true fans. And in doing so, we've wasted a fantastic opportunity to raise a lot of money for charity. So connect with your calls. Work out, and I think as Gibbs said, what that purpose is. That's step one. You then move on to identify. Now this is the point where you're really searching within the organization. You've identified your why, you've identified your cause. Bring that within the organization and try and find people that can help you deliver on that project. People, technology, whatever it is to help you get that idea off the ground and up and running, seek out those people. And it's not only those people that are going to help you deliver on that project. It's something that you need them for. Like I mentioned earlier, you can't do this alone. And actually, one piece of advice I'd give would, would be to never underestimate the willingness of those around you to help you out, to lend a helping hand. It's in incredibly powerful, and without them, you won't progress through this stage. So identify the right people. Think finance. Think legal, think marketing, think brand. Think of all the people and experience you need, again, to help get this off the ground and running. That brings me on to sell. Now, there's no point identifying who within the organization can help you deliver on this project if you can't persuade them to work with you. And this is really where the connect part of the process comes into play. You've really got to use that passion, that drive, that motivation that you have for your own personal cause to sell your story, to sell your vision. Passion sells. And if you've picked the right team wisely, 
then they'll be ready to go on that journey with you. It's something that I wasn't uh, familiar with. I was completely new to the sales element. But if you've got passion, if it's your idea, if it's your motivation, and you've got a group of people willing to support you and move that idea forward, then you're halfway there. Which brings me on to the action side of the step, the fourth step in the five. You've identified your why. You've identified and connected with your cause. You've understood the people that can help you deliver on that project. You've successfully sold your story, sold your vision. And now you'll find yourself with a group of people that are embarking into unknown territory with you as lead. What's holding you back? Go out. Act, take action. Do something. Start building. Start validating. Start testing. Start providing or searching for hard facts and figures. Because without them, you won't progress to the fifth and final stage. You won't succeed in that all-important sponsor backing your project. You need something tangible. You need some hard facts and figures. I was in the fortunate position to have had the Princess Trust Million Makers competition as, as ticket aid platform, so to speak, allowing us to validate, allowing us to test our assumptions, allowing us to get some facts and figures in the, in the form of funds raised and employees engaged. But you need something to show for the hard work, the time, the hours you're putting into this. Because without it, you can't progress from this stage. And that brings me on to the fifth and final step to success for a social entrepreneur. That's the sponsor. Now, this is something that will be on your mind from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep at night. Who is going to sponsor this project? Where is it going to sit within the business? Who's going to resource it? Who's going to put their name to back my project? And more importantly, to back me, to lead that project. It's something that a lot of people and a lot of projects have fallen down on. But for me, it comes to choosing the right type of sponsor. Searching for the right individual. And don't be shy to go straight to the top. In Ticket Aid's instance, we looked for three sponsors. We had a head of, global head of corporate responsibility and inclusion. We had a leader in our technology space and a president of the largest revenue generating business unit for the organization backing the idea. Now, they were all three fantastic sponsors. But I'll tell you what made them great and what makes a great sponsor. A great sponsor will fight for your idea when you're not in the room. A great sponsor will think of creative ways in which to position this within the business. And a great sponsor will back you to lead the charge. In Ticket A's instance, we were fortunate to have three great sponsors with that. But a question that we generally received quite frequently was along the lines of, well, where does this sit? This isn't a natural product or proposition that sits within our current product offerings or, or, or services. Where does Ticket Aid sit? And this is really where your storytelling needs to resurface. It's where your entrepreneurship, creativity, your flair needs to come to the forefront. I tied it back to our company's core values in trust, partnership, innovation, and performance. I stated that Ticket Aid not only embodied these core values, but it allowed us to continue demonstrating that for our employees. But not only that, it allowed us to pass these core values on to our clients, their employees, and the charities we partnered with. Now, a great sponsor will understand and recognize that higher purpose. They'll find a place for your project to sit within the business even if it means creating a new role, as it was for my position. So they're the five key steps to success to being a social entrepreneur. Connect, identify, sell, action, and sponsor. Now, I forgot to click next. Um, 
Now, we'd love, if you think what I've spoken about today has really resonated with you and you think within your own organizations, this is something you'd like to participate in, please do get in touch. Collectively, we can raise and achieve so much more. And I'm sure Thompson Reuters aren't the only organization out there that have corporate tickets that go to waste. We'd love to hear from you. And on that note, I'd like to leave you with our Thompson Reuters ticket aid maxim. And do more, see more, be more. Thank you.